Welcome to uh, Future Now Talks. Today, I have the pleasure of uh, having with me for an interview, uh, Taif Mohsin, who is the Vice President of Integrated Operations, Innovation and Future Technologies at Expo 2020. He is the man that has built all the application infrastructure of Expo throughout its uh, history, from the initial days of construction all the way to the amazing site that we have today. So welcome, Taif. Thank you, Miguel, for the intro. Pleasure to be here. So uh, Taif, the uh, setup in Expo has been really uh, incredible. You guys have rolled hundreds of applications initially in all the construction phase, then through the marketing launch, now operations, ticketing. I mean, it's, it's really uh, complex. And you selected to have a multi-cloud environment. Can you describe for us uh, what is the architecture that you have defined in Expo? Expo 2020 runs a complex multi-cloud architecture, mainly due to the complexity and the large number of applications that we have. So basically we run our IT infrastructure at uh, three different clouds. The first being Etisalat, um, private cloud, physically located in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi. The second one is the Amazon public cloud, physically located in Bahrain and in Mumbai in India. And the third one is the on-site data centers that we have physically located in Expo 2020 site. So eventually we have um, over 100 applications fully integrated, talking to each other across multiple cities, in actual fact, across multiple countries, yet maintaining data integrity and security. Exciting. So it looks like a significant amount of work to design, uh, set up and operate this uh, complex uh, infrastructure. Um, so what were the reasons why you selected this type of architecture? What drove you to having this type of multi-cloud environment? Um, well, to host a global um, large uh, mega event like Expo, we need to host our IT infrastructure in the best cloud option. Um, each cloud has its own pros and cons, whether it's private or public, whether it's on-site, off-site, whether it's Amazon, um, Microsoft or Oracle, they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. So for us to get the best of all the worlds, we had to uh, go with the multi-cloud architecture, but we still had to keep multiple factors into consideration. Things like IT systems availability. We have a lot of mission critical systems where the availability of these systems had to be almost 100%. Time to market. Um, we needed to be agile. We needed to have the flexibility to deploy any applications at any point in time we have the system scalability and the ability to use automatic scaling, whether up or down, depending on the load. Security is another factor. Some systems data had to remain in the country for security reasons. And of course, we have a very challenging aspect when it came to the application's compatibility to the cloud. Not all applications are compatible to run on the cloud. And at the same time, some of them can run on one cloud, but not the other. So Taif, uh, as part of the uh, overall experience and, and, and as part of your responsibility, uh, integrated operations means that you really had to architect the operations of uh, all the platforms and all the applications. How was the operational experience of this uh, multi-cloud architecture that you defined? I believe that we had a unique, interesting uh, journey hand in hand with Etisalat when it comes about talking about the operational experience. Um, Expo 2020 created an opportunity. It was the platform where it enabled Etisalat to upscale their services, the cloud services that they already had. Um, it was an opportunity uh, for them to uh, enhance their resources, their tools, their processes, their skill sets, and it was an opportunity for them to create a framework that is needed to operate and manage 
such complex multi-cloud environment. Um, I feel today and proudly um, uh, say it, that I believe Etisalat uh, have reached the level of maturity uh, to actually operate and manage uh, one of the most complicated multi-cloud environments in the region. I'm really glad to hear that uh, because, you know, we have suffered together to create all these capabilities. So I'm really, uh, you know, uh, aligned and, and thankful for your comments. Uh, definitely we have worked together to, to reach to the level that you have uh, explained. What have been the main challenges that uh, we have faced together uh, from your point of view uh, throughout all this uh, operational rollout? First of all, I think a multi-cloud architecture is the way forward for any enterprise, for any large cooperation, for all the enterprises, um, I believe it's inevitable. Um, saying that, and, and despite all the benefits that comes with a multi-cloud architecture, it comes with its own challenges. Um, multi-cloud architecture simply means more complex enterprise and integration architecture. Um, applications talking across multiple clouds is a challenging aspect that needs to be assessed carefully when looking into the option of going to a multi-cloud architecture. The resources and the skill sets required to manage and operate multi-cloud architecture is another challenging factor. We will need to diversify the, the, the resources. Um, we will need to have possibly larger teams uh, to support all these different clouds, that's not to mention the different technologies that comes with these different clouds. Um, Multi-cloud architecture also makes the uh, disaster recovery uh, uh, and the business continuity plans and implementation much more complicated. So if you add all these factors together, they also will have a direct impact on the cost which can be another challenge. So, uh, Taith, there are a couple of questions that we ask all uh, our guests in uh, Future Now Talks. The first one is, what would you preserve for the future? Uh, what, what is it in, in your personal or professional life that you would like to preserve for the future? When we talk about the context of the cloud, uh, what I would like to really uh, preserve for the future is the ability to choose between the different cloud architectures that are available today and not to be forced to use one over the other. Simply because the, um, the limitations that we have when it comes to legacy systems where the, not all of those applications can run on the cloud or when it comes to the security limitations where we will keep having requests from uh, security agencies to have the data inside the country, uh, those limitations will not go away um, and therefore I would like to keep the control and the ability to choose the different flavors of the cloud architectures that we have today. Excellent. And on the other side, if you think of anything that could happen in the future, um, what would you bring from the future to today? What I would like to see today uh, is more emphasis on having um, more SaaS solutions uh, in the market, especially for complex applications. Um, I would love uh, for software companies to put more emphasis and more uh, effort into certifying their applications uh, on the cloud. Also, what I would like to see is more uh, enhanced applications that help us to manage and control the multi-cloud architecture. Uh, we don't have a lot of tools today that simplifies the process of management and this is something that would be of a great benefit to the organizations that do run multi-cloud architectures. Thank you very much, Taif. It was really uh, exciting and interesting to, to hear uh, about your experience. And uh, it's been a pleasure having with us, uh, you know, all your experience today. So thank you very much. The pleasure was all mine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, continue following us on Future Now Talks.